grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, I'm Pastor Jonathan Lamp here at Christ United Methodist Church in Shenandoah, Virginia. Today is Sunday, February 25th, 2018. And my sermon is entitled today, Jesus Heading to the Cross. Our scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But Peter, or but Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, and he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he began, uh, he called the crowd to him, along with his disciples, and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and simple generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him, them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I remember in 1994 seeing the movie The Lion King. I remember my classmates in school talking about this movie for like a year as they would play out the story during our recess breaks. I remember seeing this movie with the head male line, the king of the pride lands named Mufasa. He showed the kingdom to his son Simba, who learned that everything in the daylight was part of the kingdom. There also was a, a dark area that was not part of the kingdom, the elephant graveyard. Well, Mufasa's brother Scar tricks Simba into going into this dreadful place, the graveyard, elven graveyard, as a trap. But Mufasa saves him. Then Scar sets up yet another trap to get rid of Mufasa so he could become king. Scar leads uh, Simba into the canyon and his hyena friends stampede water beast into the canyon. That's when Mufasa comes on the scene and saves his son. Simba from certain death. Mufasa succeeds in saving his son, yet he loses his own life in the stampede. This is a turning point in the Lion King movie. Our scripture lesson this morning is also about a turning point in the story of the Gospel of Mark. Jesus has been healing the sick and teaching the crowds about what it means to follow God. He also has been uh, assembled a group of disciples to teach. Many people recognize that Jesus was different. They classified him among the prophets of old, like Elijah. Yet, he was someone that was greater than any of these prophets. The disciples Simon Peter knew that Jesus was more than a prophet. Peter acclaimed Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ. These titles in English mean Savior, as the Jewish people have been waiting for centuries for the Messiah to come and save them. Jesus acknowledges uh, to his disciples that he is the Messiah that they've heard and waited for all their uh, lives. I believe it's safe to say that the disciples saw Jesus as a new King David. They were free people from being ruled by the Roman Empire. They had envisioned Jesus as a future warrior king that was going to make Israel an independent nation, a kingdom 
perhaps even an empire, that ruled the lands that once belonged to King David. That's when Jesus began to tell them that he, as the son of man, must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. When his disciples heard this, they realized that they had, been, had different goals than their teacher had. Simon Peter tries, or he rebukes his teacher, a serious breach in the protocol as a student that day and time. I can imagine Peter saying, no, Jesus, you got it all wrong. You're not supposed to suffer and die. You're supposed to be the king that restores the kingdom of Israel and defeats the Romans. Jesus' words also carry importance with the disciples. If he was going to have to suffer and die, then his disciples may also have to experience suffering and death also. After Peter's rebuke, Jesus turned to him and tells him, Get behind me, Satan. You're not thinking God's thoughts, but human thoughts. The disciples did not realize that Jesus' kingdom was not going to be a political state in the Middle East. Jesus' kingdom was a spiritual one where he wanted to rule in the hearts of men and women everywhere. If Jesus would have become an earthly king, we would have submitted ourselves to him only by doing what he commanded. Instead, Jesus, God the Son, knew that the human heart needed to be transformed. And that's because when we give our hearts, we submit our full selves to God. And this is what authentic faith looks like. This this paragraph we are hearing about is really the beginning of the turning point in the Gospel of Mark. Because from this point on, Jesus is focused on his mission that involves him dying in Jerusalem. Yesterday, Doug Dokenauer shared uh, at our men's breakfast about the importance of being authentic and being transparent about our wounds and sharing our sins with one another. Not to glorify them, but to help each other and those outside of the church recognize that they're not alone. We should feel that they, we don't need to wear masks because being authentic about our faith gives us freedom. And it gives other, it allows others to, who are watching and listening to us to have the freedom to respond to Jesus. I reflect on the disciples and recognize that uh, they were also broken and didn't get things always right. However, God changed the hearts of these men and that they one day would have a great future impact on the church and the world. Because God was able to use these men despite their weaknesses, we're called to recognize that God will use the work of his kingdom. So Jesus gathered around himself and the disciples another crowd. Jesus began to teach the crowd by saying, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. When we see the cross, we think of a symbol of hope. Yet, for those who lived in the first century, this is not what they thought. They saw a symbol of the worst kind of capital punishment that was possible. Cruel and shameful death that was known in that time. Jesus continues to tell them that whoever wants to save their life will lose it. So anyone who lives by selfish desire will end up losing in the end. It will only be those who are willing to lay down their lives and save their um, and save their lives. We have to be willing to sacrifice and follow Jesus to find the authentic life. As we remember what Jesus said, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? 
Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? We have to be willing to sacrifice and give up our selfish desires so we can continue to seek the kingdom. This allows us to live the authentic life. The cartoon character Mufasa was willing to sacrifice himself for his son. Jesus was willing to die upon the cross in order to set free us from slavery to sin and death. Because Jesus did this, we can experience the authentic life more. So we are called to take up the cross and follow Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, for us. May you, Lord, encourage us to take up your cross and to follow the sa our Savior, Jesus. Help us to be authentic in our faith. We pray this in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Jonathan. How are you?